Welcome to the Epic Flight Academy. You know, here's a question that comes up quite often. Can I fly for hire if I hold a commercial pilot certificate? Well, the answer seems pretty simple. Of course I can. I'm a commercial pilot. In fact, the reason I worked and studied so hard to get my commercial certificate was so that I could fly for hire. Well, folks, this question seems pretty clear cut at first glance, but it's not quite that simple. Welcome to the Epic Flight Academy Commercial Pilot Course. I'm your host, Mike Thompson, and there are three keys to success in this course, and here they are. And please remember to hit that subscribe button. Flying for hire is a little more complex than one might think at first glance. So let's discuss the commercial pilot privileges and limitations. Well, where exactly should we begin? The best place to start is with FAR 61.133, which is actually titled Commercial Pilot Privileges and limitations. Now, there's a happy coincidence. Okay, let's examine this regulation and answer questions as we work through it. So, it tells me that if I hold a commercial certificate, I may carry persons or property for compensation or hire if I'm qualified in accordance with this part and the applicable parts of this chapter. Folks, that's an important and. So let's start with the first half of that sentence. Qualified with this part means part 61, and that means primarily these four things. Number one, I'm certified in accordance with FAR 61-123, 125, 127, and 129, and I have passed my FAA checkride for the certificate. Number two, I'm current. And this would mean current according to FAR 6156 concerning a flight review and 6157 concerning recent experience. Number three, I'm rated appropriately. Now, this is FAR 61.31. For example, do I need a type rating? Look in paragraph A. Will I be flying a complex aircraft and so need a complex endorsement? Look in paragraph E. Remember, these are just a few of the many examples of ratings and endorsements. And number four, I have a current medical, first or second class as appropriate, for what the appropriate medical would be. Please refer to FAR 61.23. Now, after it says qualified in accordance with this part, the second part of the sentence goes on to say, and with the applicable parts of this chapter. Applicable parts of this chapter means chapter one, which is the FAA under title 14, which is aeronautics and space. So take a look at this excerpt from title 14, chapter one. This is subchapter G, air carriers and operators for compensation or hire. The excerpt you see here is taken from the Code of Federal Regulations website at ecfr.gov. So that's what it means when it says qualified in accordance with this part and the applicable parts of this chapter. You have to be a commercial pilot, yes, but you must also be qualified based upon the type 
of operation you are planning to perform. Refer to that applicable part for specific requirements. For example, flying for an airline would be part 121. Now, in terms of limitations, there are a few, and we see them listed in 61.133 paragraph B. Paragraph B1 tells us that I am prohibited from carrying passengers for hire at night in an airplane on cross-country flights in excess of 50 nautical miles unless I hold an instrument rating. And of course, I will be limited by specific ratings that I do or do not have. As mentioned earlier, I need to have the appropriate type ratings and endorsements as required for that specific aircraft. And don't forget, also for that specific operation. Okay, so far so good. Let's say I'm qualified, as we've just described, and I have two career paths ahead of me. Path one, I'm going to take the entrepreneurial route. I want to build a small flying company. I'm going to buy a Beechcraft Baron that looks like this, folks. And I'm going to use my commercial pilot certificate to fly people around the southeastern United States. I've got a great business plan, and I've come up with a really great name. Maybe Stellar Airways, or something simple like... Mike's Air Taxi. I'm going to save a ton on advertising by just using my social media connections. Path number two. I've been offered a position with the Straight and Plum Construction Company in the Pacific Northwest, flying their employees all over the West Coast in a Beechcraft Baron that the company owns. Wow, the same airplane I want to buy to start Stellar Airways. Hmm, what to do, what to do? Well, folks, the first thing to do is read Advisory Circular 120-12A and realize that these are two completely different jobs. They both require a commercial pilot certificate, yes, but I would not be legal in both cases. In path one, I would be operating under common carriage, and I would be illegal until I applied for and received authority as an air carrier from the FAA and the Department of Transportation. In path two, I would be operating under private carriage, and I would be legal. Now, does that seem confusing? If so, you're not alone. The difference between private carriage and common carriage is explained in Advisory Circular 120-12A, conveniently titled, Private Carriage versus Common Carriage of Persons and Property. Let's start with paragraph four, where it explains that. A carrier, that would be me operating Stellar Airways with my Beechcraft Baron, becomes a common carrier when it holds itself out to the public or to a segment of the public as willing to furnish transportation within the limits of its facilities to any person who wants it. Mm, the limits of its facilities. Folks, that means my Beechcraft Baron flying from Orlando to Atlanta with four passengers because it can't fly from Orlando to Paris with 200 passengers. Okay, how about some elements to further define this to help us understand? 
The advisory circular goes on to tell us that a common carrier has these four elements. A holding out of a willingness to transport persons or property from place to place for compensation. Number one, a holding out of a willingness to. Number two, transport persons or property. Number three, from place to place. Number four, for compensation. Notice, if I take my entrepreneurial route in path one, where I want to build a small flying company, that's exactly what I'd be doing. I'd be doing all four of those elements. All right, this is starting to make some sense. Just one question. What the heck is meant by holding out? Advertising. Well, welcome back from that short commercial break. According to the advisory circular, signs and advertising are the most direct means of holding out, but they are not the only ones. The advisory circular tells us that holding out may also be accomplished through actions of agents or agencies or a sales force in general, expressing a willingness to serve anyone interested. Holding out without advertising is certainly possible and is still considered holding out. And if the holding out generates little success, that is of no consequence. Ooh, sorry, Stellar Airways. The advisory circular states that the nature and character of the operation are the most important issue. So even if my advertising doesn't work or I only get a few customers, my idea for Stellar Airways is still common carriage. So how is path two different? Path two is where I'm flying for straight and plumb construction. It is carriage for hire. I'm being hired to fly the company's Beechcraft Baron to move its employees. But neither straight and plum construction or I am holding out. Neither one of us is advertising the fact that I am flying people around the West Coast in the Baron and getting paid for it. And I'm not flying the general public but rather a small group of known passengers. Here are some elephants, uh, elephants, Ele here are some elephants. Here are some elements that define private carriage. Number one, does not hold out. Well, okay, we're not advertising at Straight and Plum. Number two, carries select customers, not from the general public. Yeah, okay, I'm carrying employees of the Straight and Plum Construction Company, not anybody from the general public who requests it. And number three is long-term in nature. Yeah, I've been hired to work for them as their pilot. Well, folks, I hope that this has helped lend some clarity to the topic of commercial pilot privileges and limitations. We've covered FARs 61.133 and 61.31. Common versus private carriage. What is meant by holding out and advisory circular 120-12A. Join us next time. Hey, uh, video guy. Why am I in the video? Where's that hidden track? Hidden track. Yeah, 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 you know, the one about holding out and private pilots? Um, something about sports. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one where we talk about the private pilot flying to the NFL game in Jacksonville or the private pilot that makes regular trips to Memphis to see family? Yeah. Where is that thing? Mike, you're not going to find it in the aviation educational void that I have you trapped in. The video is right here. Yeah, this is it. Hey, folks. Join us for this hidden track about how a private pilot may share expenses without being considered flying for hire. Find it on YouTube at Epic Flight Academy under Private Pilot. We'll see you there.